Okay, we're starting. Um, welcome everyone. I just want to welcome you all to By Data Riyadh uh, kickoff webinar. I am Daniel Dosri from By Data Riyadh, and I'll be moderating the talk tonight. I also work alongside the By Data Riyadh team, consisting of uh, Abdullah Al Numi, Rubal Maruti, Abdullah Al Misfar, Abdullah Al Kenhal and Najla Al-Baz. We're also delighted to be joined by uh, Zaid al who's uh, with us. Ahlan Zaid. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, I. Uh, so just before handing it over to Zaid, uh, I would like to briefly introduce my data and Riyadh chapter to everyone. Uh, okay, so let's start off. So, who are we? PyData is a global educational program by NumFocus. We promote discussions of latest technology and open source contribution in the data related fields. Uh, as you can see in the picture, some of the technologies that we cover in Python, Julia, and R, and some others which are not in the picture. PyData is in over 60 countries, with also over 170 groups globally. And this is PyData Riyadh, as you see, we also, if you can also check out PyData, Jeddah and Khubar are also there. So what do we do? We aim to be first and foremost a community, community driven and to provide a forum and meetups for users and developers of data analysis tool to learn and share from one another. Now, if you want to learn more about PyData, you can visit the website pydata.org. Additionally, if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter, PyData Riyadh, to be updated of any news relating to PyData Riyadh chapter or PyData in general. Now, before I pass it over, I just want to introduce uh, Zaid. Uh, Zaid is a PhD candidate at King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals. And he's been doing a lot of exciting work in the field of deep learning, RNN, and NLP. He's joining us today to discuss his project, uh, Arab ML. And this session will last for around 50 minutes with the last 10 dedicated for Q&As. So do not hesitate to drop a question in the Q&A section, and we will try our best to answer all of the questions. I'll be handing it over to you, Zaid. Um, yes, uh, I'm trying to share my screen, but uh, okay. should, yeah. now I can. Okay. Should be visible right now, right? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> regarding uh, Q and A's, um, do you have like a specific question about things that are in the presentation? Uh, don't forget to mention the context, so we know that you are asking about a specific topic. Um, yeah. So, going to start right now. I'm a PhD student. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. Um, I'm a second year PhD student at KPPM, currently working on Arabic uh, natural language processing. I've been working a lot on open source projects. So, today I'm going to talk about uh, one of these projects that I worked on uh, previous summer. Um, this is uh, co founded by Imagine Said. So, um, uh, RBML. Uh, uh, was uh, created with the um, with the purpose of democratizing Arabic natural language processing. Um, so the um, motivation. Um, so uh, we know that machine learning has proven its importance in in many fields, like computer vision, NLP, reinforcement learning, adversarial learning, etc. So unfortunately, there is a little work to make machine learning accessible for Arabic-speaking people. 
most NLP models require a lot of time to replicate, test, and collect data. So uh, with this in mind, um, uh, there are uh, many challenges that uh, are uh, in a way or another connected to Arabic in general. So uh, Arabic uh, language is more politically rich and there exist many dialects, as you know, different places have different uh, dialects and this resulted in different vocabulary uh, span. Um, also, Arabic contains special characters like uh, uh, diacritics that help readers pronounce words correctly. Uh, there is a lack in research and uh, annotated data. So, um, regarding NLP in general, and um, uh, although, although uh, there are uh, many uh, Arabic like data available, but there is no uh, or there is little work. I think we we lost uh, Z due to technical difficulties. He might log on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll be joining uh, shortly. Can you hear me? He's here, yeah. I'm sorry, my internet's connected. I had that time for that. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, yeah, so uh, do I have to repeat some stuff? Um, yeah, uh, so here we are at the... Um, okay, so um, in terms of challenges, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Arabic in general, uh, is more politically rich, uh, contains special characters or like uh, their critics, and uh, there is lack in research and analytic data. And uh, in general, open source is not popular, and a lot of research is closed source. Uh, Arabic and LB um, uh, applications are lacking. Um, can you just reshare the screen? Because when you were cut off. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can yes. you see the screen? Okay, so uh, our mission, uh, mission in, our, uh, in our ML is to create open source projects, uh, open the community eyes on the significance of natural language processing, which is a field that is like um, attracting a lot of uh, research and importance in current uh, research. Also, we want to create interactive applications that allow novice Arabs to learn more about machine learning and NLP in general. Also, also we would like to provide researchers and developers with model prototypes, reproducible results, and data sets. Uh, finally, we want to create different interfaces targeting different audience. So the, ma the main idea is that we want to create applications um, as well as uh, APIs. So um, we, we, we started by th this, uh, this pipeline, uh, although we are planning to 
um, for the further uh, develop our approach. But this is like the initial um, architecture we had in mind. Uh, first, we would like to um, create and collect uh, the pre-processed data sets. Uh, we want to train them on uh, using different deep, le deep learning approaches like Keras, for instance. This is a platform or a, a library that is um, uh, built on uh, TensorFlow for creating uh, deep learning models in general. And also we want to run these interfaces or applications in the browser. So what we are doing is that we want to convert, uh, use TensorFlow.js, which is a uh, uh, a tool that is part of the um, that's part of the um, TensorFlow ecosystem, and its uh, main purpose is to allow machine learning models to run directly in the browser without uh, any backend source servers. So, just a static website can run uh, a complicated NLP model, for instance. So after the, we do that, uh, of course we do all of that in lab notebooks. So people can uh, retrain our models, uh, recreate our results, and uh, hopefully be able to create different applications. Um, uh, uh, in terms of the um, interfaces that uh, we have, uh, after we convert to TensorFlow.js, we want to add the model to the website. Then also we want to, uh, call or uh, uh, make the data set available uh, to end users. And finally, we also allow the notebooks uh, to be available for people to recreate or uh, to replicate uh, our results. So, um, uh, this is like a, a quick um, recap of the tools that we are using. So for programming, if you are not familiar with deep learning in general, we um, use Python for coding and JavaScript and HTML, uh, CSS for creating the web interfaces. Uh, we use Google Colab, which is an interface for uh, training models that allows you to use uh, uh, CP, uh, GPUs and TPUs for training models. As you know, uh, uh, in uh, deep learning in general, you need GPUs in order to train different models. So uh, it's important to be able to use um, or uh, to get familiar with Colab in general. Um, uh, Colab uh, currently uh, has two different um, versions. First one is the standard one, which is uh, you al which allows you to run models or train models for around uh, twelve hours. And there is also the pro version, which allows you to train models for 24, 24 hours. After the the time period is um, ends. Uh, you will have to, um, uh, the uh, virtual machine will reset and you have to start everything from the beginning. Uh, also, if you are not familiar with TensorFlow.js, is uh, an ecosystem um, that uh, allows machine learning models to run in the browser. Uh, it's built uh, using JavaScript. So if you are familiar with JavaScript, you'll be able to run that. Um, so, um, uh, we created different models that are related to Arabic, and um, uh, most of the models here are uh, we we trained them uh, ourselves, and some other models um, are actually ported from different research. So, since uh, Arabic decretization, this is uh, from Shakala uh, translation. We trained our six to seek. Uh, model with attention. If you are not familiar with these architectures, um, don't worry, I will not go into de details, but just know that these architectures are generally used for such purposes. Uh, poem generation, uh, Arabic words embeddings, this uses the model Arabic, uh, sentiment, sentiment classification, image captioning, um, uh, uh, word similarity, uh, classific uh, digit classification, speech recognition, uh, Arabic object detection, and also uh, we recently published a paper on poem uh, or meter classification, as Nifal before to share, and we added the model actually to the interface. So um, we also published different um, different uh, datasets. 
Um, these data sets, uh, data sets, we didn't collect them ourselves, but we made sure uh, to mention the references as well as um, make them available for end users or for developer, developers in general to be able to use them directly without uh, needing too much like pre-processing because it takes too much time to clean the data, for instance, for specific purposes. So, uh, for instance, we have um, digits, um, this is 70,000 images. We have the letters, Arabic letters, we have around 60,000. Uh, Poems, 100,000. Uh, uh, for translation, we have uh, collected from the open subtitles, uh, 100,000 parallel uh, the, uh, text from English and uh, Arabic. For product reviews for sentiment, Classification, we have 1,600. Uh, uh, image captioning, uh, we have collected uh, 30,000 images um, from using Coco and we used uh, uh, Google AI for translation. Uh, also, we have uh, Arabic Wiki, which is uh, usually used for language modeling. Uh, and finally, we have the latest one, which is uh, uh, Arabic poem meters, which contains 55,000 50, verses with their associated uh, labels from different meters. Um, so I'm going to introduce the interface that we have currently. Uh, so this is the interface. We have around 10,000 models. We show here only three. And in the interface, we, we, we have three main tabs. First is the, the link to the, to the source code, and also uh, a link to Colab, so you can retrain the model if you want, and also allows you to run the model directly in the browser. On the other end, I have, if I have some time, I can run some of these models, uh, so we could, we could see how they perform. Um, so um, we added different models and different tasks, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, for instance, um, translation and embedding. Here you put the word or the sentence in Arabic, and it will translate to English. And uh, also, this is uh, embedding, where you put a certain word in Arabic, and it will find uh, similar words with uh, like that would appear. Um, in uh, the same context, for instance, potatoes, potato, and uh, it has like pizza, falafel, uh, falaja, things like that. So, um, uh, also we have uh, decoratization. So, as I mentioned earlier, decoratization is very important in Arabic because it removes ambiguity in pronouncing words in general. So, uh, for instance, the sentence uh, "Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh" it will be theocratized. You will see that these models are not actually perfect; they make some mistakes, and uh, this raises the question of, like, um, how easy to deploy, deploy such models or commercialize them in general. It's a little bit difficult because they make some mistakes, and you have to be careful. Um, uh, with testing. So, uh, for instance, at the end, it makes mistakes. So, uh, in Kasra, at the end, it should be um, uh, Also, we need um, some uh, sentiment analysis. So, the idea of sentiment analysis is that you give uh, or classify each sentence, whether it is uh, positive or negative. For instance, the first sentence, it is uh, positive with 95% accuracy uh, or confidence. And uh, if it is negative, like al la takfil kathir min al so it will be give like 70% uh, confidence. Um, also, uh, one of the research that we made uh, this year is a meter classification. So you give the meter of each uh, verse that you put uh, without with or without diacritics, and you'll see that it will give you a specific meter for each one of them. 
Uh, also, we added uh, like a quick interface for drawing uh, digits, Arabic digits, um, and it will give you the correct class for them. For instance, uh, three, five, and seven in Arabic. It were uh, they were uh, correctly classified for their corresponding uh, number. Um, we also added object detection. Um, uh, this uses YOLO, uh, which is a deep learning model for object detection. So for each object that appears in the scene, it will give it the bounding box around the object as well as the correct label. This is, this is a car, bicycle, and the dog. Um, uh, one of the interesting applications that we made is image captioning. So you give it like an image and, and it will give a description of this, uh, uh, of this image. This was one of the most interesting applications because we didn't have annotated data for it and we had to translate from English. We used the, the MSS Coco dataset, which is one of the most used um, datasets for uh, object detection. And uh, we'll see that it gives like a uh, description for instance for where it's a giraffe is standing in um, um, in some green places. So um, uh, also uh, you will see that it makes some mistakes. Uh, it confuses these as some kinds of, of sheep that are on the uh, on kind of snow, which is incorrect. So um, as I said earlier, uh, these models are not, are not perfect. Uh, also, we had to uh, do some kind of quantization because we want to reduce size of these models. We don't want um, the model uh, to take a lot of time for loading. So uh, this will affect the accuracy a little bit because the size of the models will reduce uh, considerably. So uh, for people who are interested in contributing uh, in our RML, we created different projects that you could, they, could, they could work on. And also we encourage people to work um, in their own projects if they want to work on them, for instance. Here we suggested different projects that are very interesting and could have like some interesting applications, for instance, um, uh, question answering, grammar fix, uh, uh, fixer, uh, punctuations, document classification, spam classification, uh, Arabic manuscripts recognition, voice to text, uh, optical character recognition, text autocomplete. Uh, these some of these tasks are in general in general very difficult because um, language comprehension in Arabic is. Um, is difficult because uh, of the difficulties that we mentioned earlier. So um, it will be very interesting research for anyone who is interested in working on any of these things. Um, uh, so in terms of the limitations that we are um, in general uh, facing, are uh, uh, it's difficult to host everything on GitHub. We know that uh, we have to host everything. The models, some of them are large, like over 50 mega, for instance, megabytes. And also we have to host large data sets. Um, so this is kind of a difficulty that we are facing currently. Uh, as I said, that NLP models are getting bigger, also, uh, especially for language modeling. For instance, uh, BERT models are actually uh, very large and it's difficult to put them uh, uh, or to even run them in the browser. And this is kind of limitation that we have to uh, work on. And there are some ideas that we want to uh, do in the future. For instance, there are some kind of techniques that you can use to reduce the size of the models, for instance, installation and pruning. Uh, and there exist actually some models that run uh, in the browser, but they are not in Arabic. Um, uh, uh, in terms of um, 
And there is another difficulty that we are fa facing, which is uh, open source contribution. Um, uh, all the projects that we work on were contributed by only two people, which are me and Majid, and there is lack uh, of interest from people to work on this project. So um, it will be interesting to see if people attending this session will be interested to work on some of the projects that we mentioned. Uh, also, research is moving fast. Um, our idea is not to make models that are that can work actually in the in practice, but uh, our main focus is to, to see or to emphasize that these models um, can be used for such tasks. So are generating in general uh, some prototyping. So uh, in general, it's a little bit difficult to make state of the arts are accessible in the browser because of the size I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, a lot of these models are actually, um, it, uh, let us say, uh, close to the state of the art, but it could be improved a lot. Uh, uh, time is, of course, uh, like a constraint that we have. We don't have the time to work on all of these models. That's why community contribution is very important. Um, so uh, research is moving pretty fast, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, also we are encouraging people who are working on uh, research. Uh, for instance, if you're a master student, PhD student working on Arabic, you are interested um, or uh, to add these models these two um, uh, I'm going to mention some ideas that we are planning to add in the future so in terms of models um, uh, it's a little bit uh, we are focusing on different things now because uh, as you go into research you see the how important to work on different things that are related to Arabic as well for instance, uh, organization. Organization is very important and we are planning to add or to uh, publish a organization library that is only for Arabic. And we are in the final stages of publishing that hopefully like in a week or so. Uh, also, we are working on uh, data preprocessors and visualizers. Uh, it's very important to be able to do that. So people can use uh, ready-made APIs that they can implement in their different applications. This makes uh, the process or the pipeline of making NLP models much more easier. Also, we are uh, planning to make an interface for that scrapping. So most of the model models or approaches uh, use uh, uh, data sets that can be extracted from the web. So it will be very important. Um, to uh, make APIs that are easily accessible by people. Also, we are working on models like the Stilbert. We want to do it in Arabic. Um, so these are some of the interesting things uh, we would like to work on. Uh, if people have like other ideas, please uh, uh, feel. Uh, um, uh, we feel happy to accommodate any different uh, future work directions um, to add them. So for the Q&A, uh, I want to run the, uh, to uh, run some like uh, demonstrations. Uh, so um, uh, this is the GitHub repo. You can see the screen, right? Uh, yes, we can see it. So uh, this is the GitHub repository. Um, uh, you search for it, you will find it. Uh, also, I'll make sure to share the slides later. So, um, so we mentioned our motivation, goal, challenges related to Arabic. So also we share our architecture. Uh, also, uh, this is like the main uh, part of the repo, which is the ability to uh, either run in the browser or uh, 
uh, open uh, collab networks. So with the idea of being able to retrain such models and maybe apply them to different tasks, we added these notebooks so you will be able to recreate or replicate the results or the experiments that we did. And maybe uh, if you could work harder, maybe also improve the results that we already made. So um, uh, most of the models uh, have collab networks except for one, and also most of the models have uh, a demo. Uh, for instance, if we, if we open one of them like this one, we'll see that it will open uh, a collab notebook that you will be able to run directly in the browser and also it will install the different libraries that you have to uh, to install in order to make these uh, models run so um so here is an example uh, we first uh, import or install the library then we download the data set from our repository. Uh, then we, we import the different uh, libraries. Then we do some pre-processing. We are planning to make things a little bit more easier in the future. And this is the idea be behind making different APIs. So for, for instance, for extra extract extracting data, uh, cleaning it, uh, creating sequences and also here we create the model uh, and then we we train the model here using fit and keras and finally we save the model we also allow you to make some testing for instance this is for uh, meter classification and you'll see the accuracy here uh, i don't think i have time to run this because it'll, it will take some time so carefully feel free to run it in your own leisure time. Uh, also, we allow you to um, convert the model, which is very important. We want to be able to convert the model in order to run it in the browser. And here we are, we are installing uh, TensorFlow.js here, and then we are converting the model, and we are using quantization. Uh, the use for quantization is to reduce the model size. And sometimes you can reduce the size considerably if you use this code. And finally, we save the dictionary that is important for uh, inference. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the the uh, the main uh, thing that we do for most of our tutorials. So people can run these models, retrain them, and uh, hopefully um, improve on the results that we uh, did. And I'm sure that uh, people can make much better results than, than well, what we made. So uh, also we we have the datasets. Uh, we provide um, datasets in the repository. So if you open datasets here, you will see all the datasets in text format or in NumPy, for instance, here. Uh, image captioning. Uh, poems, product reviews, translation. Uh, yeah, so, um, and also we provide references to the, uh, how we collected all of these data sets. So you can access them, uh, access the source of these data sets. Most of these data sets we collected from different places and we made them uh, much more easier to use uh, here. So you can run the different notebooks that we illustrated earlier. Uh, we, are, we also mentioned the different tools that we use, uh, Google Colab, TensorFlow.js, and also we have the website here with uh, some examples and uh, the contributor, uh, contributors are in. So uh, let me open the website. Hopefully I'll be able to run some examples. So let me start by, for instance, uh, let me start by this one. 
So uh, this is an example we where you can draw digits and you will see the classification results at the end. Uh, for instance, it says that this is three. You can clean it and five, six, seven, uh, nine. I'm trying to make it fail. So yeah, sometimes it fails. So one is a little bit difficult to classify. Uh, I think it confuses it with different places. So uh, yeah, so this is an example of a model that runs in the browser. So one thing important to emphasize here is that this model model runs using the GPU of my machine. And if you run it in your browser, you will, it will run uh, using the GPU of your machine. Not There is no server here. It's just a static HTML page that runs using GitHub. So if you, if you see the path of the, you'll see that it runs in, solely in GitHub. Uh, let me close this and maybe another model. So let's try this one. So uh, some of, uh, of the models take some time to load because it depends on the size of the model. We can make these models much more easier, but it will um, uh, it will be on the, in the, in the cost of accuracy. Uh, so this is like a preloaded image. You can press uh, this one and it will identify each object here. Um, maybe I could try some images. Try this one. Uh, it will give a bounding box around each object. I think this model uses uh, SSD, not YOLO. I made a mistake. So yeah, SSD. Um, yeah, so um, it runs pretty fast. It doesn't take time to identify the objects, but some of the models are not as quick. Uh, let me close this one and let us try, for instance, decratization. So uh, as we mentioned in some models, uh, some of the models are slow load so maybe we as we uh, as I'm trying to run some of the model maybe we can take some questions it's okay for me uh, this is... so uh, it gives the nature of the my screen is visible so this gives the Diacritics, which is a correct one. Um, things, for instance. Uh, so um, you'll see that this model is a little bit uh, large and takes some time to, to decretize. So this one is incorrect, should be. I have to university yeah so uh it's pretty good i think maybe with longer context it will make some mistakes but i will leave this for you to try it uh, let me close this one let's try something else uh maybe let me try this one Uh, so, Dania, can we take some questions? Um, yes, sure. Uh, so thank you very much for no. the presentation. Yeah, we have a digital data set. Uh, is it like the Arabic MNIST data set? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, we can actually, let me open it. So, we provide the source of each one. So if you open this one, it will uh, it will give you the original source. So we collected this from yeah. We'll see that it is like the the Arabic MNIST. It has the same uh, structure, twenty eight by twenty eight, and it has from zero to nine. Uh, 
اوكي ويل وي تيك انذر كويستشن اور يا ليت مي يا ليت مي describe this first so this is image captioning uh, so uh, given an image it will describe and the, uh, the image uh, uh, so here we have a giraffe hubris so it will say that the correct description of the image let's try different stuff so let's try a cat so it says that black and white cat is on the bed Just some somewhat good. Um, so it says that يقف اثنان من الأغنام في أحد. So yeah, it's not perfect, but actually it preserves some uh, context. So uh, for those who are, don't understand Arabic, it says that there are two sheep on the field. There are actually there are actually many, so it made a mistake here. Um, let's try this one. Uh, sometimes it makes uh, wrong grammar. For instance, here So image captioning is actually a little bit difficult because uh, it combines image uh, computer vision and NLP. So it has first to recognize the objects and uh, then uh, make some uh, uh, NLP or some language understanding. So uh, sometimes it fails in these uh, constructions. Uh, another example is this one. So here, uh, this is actually a TV, but it, it wasn't able to recognize that. So. Although it made a good assumption that this is like a living room, maybe, and there is like maybe flowers here. So um, I think it's pretty good. Sometimes it might fail considerably. Let's try this one. So it says here it's a pizza, the table. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is a pizza. So. Uh, Sometimes this says a lot about these models. When they fail, the output result is actually very bad. And this says a lot about how uh, it's difficult in general to make these ML models uh, public because you have to do a lot of testing in order to make sure that these models actually work. If you remember, like in the past, Google Translate was, was very, very bad in Arabic, for instance. And now it's improving considerably because of the improvement or development, development in, the race, in language model in general. So yeah, I think we, uh, we can take another question. Yeah, sure. Uh, since we're on image captioning, we also got uh, a question on the image captioning. Is that a CNN feeding into an RNN? Yeah. Yeah, so this model um, uh, uh, first extracts, extracts the features from the image and then feeds the text as well as the, as well as the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, tech, uh, the image and the text. And also you can retrain this model. So if you open here, Arabic, Arabic image captioning, you will see that you can, see the whole model and maybe you can improve on it try it on different data set try it on we are using uh, ms coco that's it uh, this model uses attention which is a technique that is gaining a lot of popularity currently so uh, sometimes gives very good results so yeah we're also adding a lot of Uh, description uh, and also some examples. Maybe you can try that, see how things work. Yeah. Okay, another question is uh, Do you see GPT 3 usage for Arabic? GPT is a language model. Yeah. So uh, GPT 2, uh, GPT 3 has. Um, 
has different uh, model sizes. One of them, I think the smallest is 100 million parameters, maybe, and the largest one is a beast of 100 billion parameters uh, or around that. So um, it's a little bit challenging to run these models uh, in the browser. But in terms of usage and training these models, we are actually working on training GPT-2 uh, on Arabic. So, and we are getting some decent results. Um, we will uh, publish an article soon, maybe by the end of the month, regarding GPT-2 and uh, uh, text generation in Arabic. Uh, we got a question on regarding sentiment analysis. Some Arabic words are used in some dialect to mean a positive sentiment when the word's meaning is negative. Did you address this problem? Uh, in general, um, what is nice about um, NLP in general that uh, or uh, data-driven approaches or deep learning that, that you didn't have to consider each and every different aspect that you have to resolve unless you like you trained your model and you saw some problems in that. But if your data set is big enough and it has different variety, it will work pretty fine without explicit uh, rules for each and every case. So that should work fine for such cases. And maybe you could try different approaches. In terms of the models that we are uh, porting here, they are not state-of-the-art models. Some of them like pretty old, uh, but we are planning to work on more advanced models. Okay. Uh, we have a question. What about the diacritization of an Arabic sentiment analysis? How was it handled? Uh, usually, diacritization is a challenging problem because uh, if you include diacritics in training, you will have to uh, increase the vocabulary size that you have as well as that uh, most of the training data that we have currently online, they are not diacritized. So it's a little bit difficult to work on this case. So mostly for most of the models that we have here, we remove the diacritics before we do any training. Um, uh, so it's a little bit challenging to include diacritics as well for training. Okay. We have a question. Have you thought of building a model that summarizes Arabic articles? Yeah, so this is like the next step that we are um, working on or uh, we are like planning to work on because you know that's uh, as uh, graduate students, it's a little bit difficult to find time to work on different stuff, but it's a very interesting problem to work on. So the basic idea that we are trying to implement, hopefully, is that we want to uh, uh, maybe work on BERT uh, and make it run on the browser. And this is like a very challenging problem that it will take a lot of effort and maybe then fine tune uh, BERT to work on the uh, using summarization will be a very interesting project. So you don't have such complicated tasks like questions and answers. Okay, we'll take uh, just one more question, I think, due to the time limit. Uh, how can we solve, solve lingual uh, ambiguity? Um, um, a little bit difficult to answer a question without context. Um, but in general, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, in deep learning and digital data driven approaches, we don't make specific rules uh, for like to resolve ambiguity. Although some uh, architectures, like attention, for instance, prove to be very. Uh, 
uh, to work very uh, to work on different uh, instances and also different languages. So um, there are like a lot of research for language comprehension, and one uh, of the interesting thing uh, why we consider Arabic, for instance, is that as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are uh, different uh, like uh, morphological aspects of Arabic that makes it a little, bit, a little bit challenging compared to English, for instance, due to, for instance, derivational and inflectional, uh, inflection, uh, inflectional um, morphology. These are some of the words that are used in linguistics uh, to consider these approaches. For instance, uh, the word يتعلم, يتعلمون, يتعلمان, there are different uh, variations of each word, which makes makes it uh, very challenging to consider these uh, language modeling, or to make to make them generalized for different applications. Okay, so my bad. I thought the time was uh, a bit later. Yeah, we, I think we, we still have. have 10 minutes, <laughs> we still have yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, Okay, there is a question on um, collaboration. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, research, uh, or, okay, so first, thank you for doing this in Arabic language. You did a great job. I, see, I think you checked out the GitHub for Stanford University. Uh, and the fact that they have research labs for Arabic in uh, Qatar and another university. So the question is, is there any collaboration between you and those universities and how can we improve the community by using uh, what is already achieved? Uh, in terms of collaboration, um, as, as I said, uh, due to um, uh, that open source in general is not widely used in Arabic, um, it's, a little bit, uh, I, it's a little bit difficult um, uh, like to make uh, like to make collaborations in general uh, and uh, it's a complicated matter because um, the community in general uh, they are not familiar why open source contribution is very important in uh, in NLP for instance uh, it is very important to think about this problem uh, because it is a very important uh, challenging problem that we are facing. Uh, open source contribution allows you to uh, advance the research in Arabic. It allows you to consider and also brainstorm for with different uh, people about how you advance the research. So yeah, um, we are open to any collaborations. The university said that no to any collaborate, collaborators that want to work with us. But as I said, that uh, it's a little bit difficult for people to spend a lot of time working on open source projects because they feel that they are not awarded enough for such uh, work. Mm -hmm. sure. True. Thank you, Zaid, for uh, raising the point for open source contribution. This is Adrila from uh, PyData team. Uh, I would like to touch upon the, the point uh, of the challenge of open source contribution and again stress the, the, the mission of PyData chapters in, in Saudi, PyData Riyadh, uh, Jeddah, and Khobar. Uh, we're focused on uh, the environment of open source contributions in the Arab region and the Middle East. And my question would be uh, for people who would like to s get started in, in uh, contributing to this project and other open source projects, uh, do you have any uh, resources or tips uh, that you would like to share with us uh, for people who would like to get started on, on contributing to this project or any other open source projects? Yeah. Um... As starter, I would like uh, I would like uh, everyone who's interested on is to visit the notebooks that we created and see how they work. Um, we have different tasks here. 
uh, every task is completely different than the other one. So there is some kind of learning curve, although some of the models are shared between different tasks, but you have to understand uh, some of the models that we have here, maybe like see some articles online on them, how they work. Although we, we, we try to make the notebooks self-sufficient, but it might be a little difficult to understand how each model will work. That's why it's very important that if you have like a specific question on a certain model, uh, just go to our GitHub and then go to issues and raise a question that you have. It's okay, even if it is like beginner question, ask them. We are happy to help on that one. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question on diacritics. Uh, for diacritics to get more data, couldn't you simply take the text that has diacritics and uh, take out the diacritics and use both together to train? Yeah, this is generally called uh, or used for, for instance, in sequence to sequence models where you have like the input and diacritized and the output is diacritized. Although that, that proved to be a, a difficult task to do. Um, I haven't tried doing that, uh, but I had some like ideas to work on it. I didn't have the time to do it. So I would say like encourage anyone who wants to work on this to, to see if they work. Uh, and maybe like if you train the model that works fine, just add it to our repository and we'll be happy to showcase the models that are done or trained from the community. Okay, thank you. We have a question. Is it available? Uh, are there models that convert Arabic handwriting from image to text? From image to text. So this is OCR. Uh, mm recognition so um, it's a very difficult problem actually uh, it's not simple because of the different uh, uh, or for the like uh, there are variety of how we write in Arabic in general uh, if it's like typed it's a little bit easier but it's still difficult for instance we tried to use open source OCR uh, projects and it didn't work well for Arabic so I think it's a very important research direction to consider because everything now uh, will be uh, or can be solved or a lot of uh, tasks can be uh, solved using OCR. And we actually had uh, a couple of ideas here. We mentioned like Arabic manuscripts recognition, maybe images and yeah, if you want to work on this, uh, please uh, go ahead. Okay, um, one more question. What is the state of the art of semantic similarity in Arabic? Uh, semantic similarity, uh, in general, um, w what I know that from like the research that they use, uh, they, uh, uh, in, the, in the past they used uh, embeddings like word to vec in order to consider like similar words then it improved into like contextualized uh, meanings like elmo and nowadays we have these large models like bird t5 tbt2 these things can be used to, to in order to similar sentence sentences for instance so i think they were pretty fine for such tasks oh. uh, okay you want to take one more question or Okay, go ahead. Okay, there's a general question. Do you have any tips to start learning NLP and uh, machine learning? Uh, in terms of tips, um, I, I would suggest that um, for, focus on a certain project that you want to achieve. It's difficult to be, because uh, in general, mach machine learning is a very big field. 
So there are different aspects of it. There is like computer vision, NLP, reinforcement learning, a lot of uh, things to study. And also it's uh, connected to different fields of science like statistics, uh, probability, and calculus. Um, so I would suggest that if you are interested in certain problem that you want to work on, uh, try by uh, by searching how this problem can be solved what are the specific or models for instance or data sets that you want to try or to work on and see if there is already like open source project on this problem and see if you can apply it or some modification of the problem so i would suggest that you start by a specific project and see how things go from there and you will learn a lot because you will face so many difficulties and you'll be able to solve them Okay, so that's our time. Uh, thank you, Zaid, so much for uh, your, your time and for this great uh, presentation. Uh, also, thank you to all the audience. And hopefully, we'll see you again uh, in next uh, by Data Real webinars. Don't forget to check uh, Zaid's GitHub and contribute to open source project. Uh, yes, and that is our time. Thank you very much and please see you again. Thank you, Zed. Thank you.